We again thank our only witness, the Attorney General of the United States, for joining us today. And Attorney General Holder, if you would please rise, I will begin by swearing you in. Do you swear that the testimony that you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you, and let the record reflect that Attorney General Holder responded in the affirmative. Our only witness today is United States Attorney General Eric H. Holder, Jr. On February 3, 2009, General Holder was sworn in as the 82nd Attorney General of the United States. General Holder has enjoyed a long career in both the public and private sectors, first joining the Department of Justice through the Attorney General's Honors Program in 1976. He became one of the department's first attorneys to serve in the newly formed Public Integrity Section. He went on to serve as a judge of the Superior Court of the District of Columbia and the United States Attorney for the District of Columbia. In 1997, General Holder was named by President Clinton to be the Deputy Attorney General. Prior to becoming Attorney General, he was a litigation partner at the Covington and Burling Law Firm in Washington, D.C. General Holder, a native of New York City, is a graduate of Columbia University and Columbia School of Law. General Holder, we appreciate your presence today and look forward to your testimony. Your entire written statement will be entered into the record, and uh, we ask that uh, you summarize your testimony uh, in five minutes. The gentleman noted that may be difficult, but uh, uh, we will uh, appreciate uh, as close to that mark as you can keep. And uh, the time is yours, General Holder. I bet I can get it under five minutes, but anyway, uh, good afternoon, Chairman Goodlatte, uh, Ranking Member Conyers. I appreciate this opportunity to appear before all of you today to discuss the Justice Department's recent achievements and to provide an overview of our top priorities. Uh, particularly in recent years, the Department has taken critical steps to prevent and to combat violence, to confront national security threats, and to ensure the civil rights of everyone in this country, and to safeguard the most vulnerable members of our society. Thanks to the extraordinary efforts of my colleagues, the nearly 116,000 dedicated men and women who serve in the Justice Department offices around the world, I'm pleased to report that we have established a remarkable record of progress in expanding our nation's founding promise of equal justice under law and ensuring the safety and the security of all of our citizens. Now, the need to continue these efforts and to remain vigilant against a range of evolving threats was really brought into sharp focus last month in the most shocking of ways when a horrific terrorist attack in Boston left three innocent people dead and hundreds injured. In the days that followed, thanks to the valor of state and local police, the dedication of federal law enforcement and intelligence officials, and the cooperation of members of the public, those suspected of carrying out this terrorist act were identified. One suspect died following a shootout with police, and the other has been brought into custody and charged in, in federal court with using a, a weapon of mass destruction. Three others have been charged in connection with the investigation of this case, which is active and ongoing. As we continue working to achieve justice on behalf of our fellow citizens and brave law enforcement officers who were injured and killed in connection with these tragic events, and to hold accountable to the fullest extent of the law all who were responsible for this heinous attack, I want to assure you that my colleagues and I are also committed to strengthening our broader national security efforts. Over the past four years, we have identified, investigated, and disrupted multiple potential plots involving foreign terrorist organizations as well as homegrown extremists. We've secured civic convictions as well as tough sentences against numerous individuals for terrorism related offenses. We've utilized essential intelligence gathering and surveillance capability in a, manner as, in a manner that is consistent with the rule of law and consistent with our most treasured values. Now beyond this work, my colleagues and I are enhancing our, our focus on a variety of emerging threats and persistent challenges, from drug trafficking and transnational organized crime to cyber threats and, and human trafficking. We're moving to ensure robust enforcement of our antitrust laws to combat tax fraud schemes and to safeguard the environment. We're building on the significant progress that's been made in identifying and thwarting financial and health care related fraud crimes. And for example, in fiscal year 
2012, our fraud detection and enforcement efforts resulted in the record-breaking recovery and return of roughly $4.2 billion. Over the last three fiscal years alone, and thanks to the President's Financial Fraud Enforcement Task Force and its federal, state, and local partners, we have filed nearly 10,000 financial fraud cases against nearly 14,500 defendants, including more than 2,000 mortgage fraud defendants. Now, as these actions prove our resolve to protect consumers and to seek justice against anyone who would seek to take advantage of their fellow citizens has never been stronger. And the same can be said of the Department's vigorous commitment to the enforcement of key civil rights protections. Since 2009, this commitment has led our Civil Rights Division to file more criminal civil rights cases than ever before, including record numbers of human trafficking cases. Under new tools and authorities, including the Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. Hate Crimes Prevention Act, we have improved our ability to safeguard our civil rights and pursue justice for those who are victimized because of their gender, their sexual orientation, their gender identity, or their disability. We will continue to, working, to work to guarantee that in our workplaces and in our military bases, in our housing and lending markets, in our schools, in our places of worship, in our immigrant communities, and also in our voting booths, that the rights of all Americans are protected. But all of this is really only the beginning. As we look toward the future, my colleagues and I are also determined to work closely with members of Congress to secure essential legislative changes, including common sense steps to prevent and to reduce gun violence, and comprehensive legislation to fix our nation's broken immigration system. It is long past the time to allow the estimated 11 million individuals who are here in an undocumented status to step out of the shadows to guarantee that all are playing by the same rules and to require responsibility from everyone, both undocumented workers and those who would hire them. Like many of you, I am encouraged to see that these basic principles are reflected in the bipartisan reform proposal that is currently being considered by the Senate. The Department will do all that it can to help strengthen that proposal and to advance a constructive, responsible dialogue on this issue. I understand this committee and other members are working on immigration reform proposals as well, and I look forward to working with you as those efforts move uh, forward to enact comprehensive reforms. However, I must note that our capacity to continue building upon the Department's recent progress is threatened by the long-term consequences of budget sequestration and joint committee reductions, which will worsen in fiscal year 2014 unless Congress adopts a balanced deficit reduction plan. Should Congress fail to do so, I fear that these reductions will undermine our ability to deliver justice for millions of Americans and to keep essential public safety professionals on the job. We simply cannot allow this to happen. This afternoon, I ask for your support in preventing these cuts and ensuring that the department has the resources it needs to fulfill its critical missions. I thank you once again for the chance to discuss uh, our current efforts with you today, and I would be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And I see I didn't make my five minutes. Your consideration was.